Hello everyone, I am Bob and this is the Home Bitcoin Immersion Mining Channel. In this design series episode, I'm going to cover how to heat your pool with Bitcoin. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so in my past few episodes, I've been covering heating your home and heating your water with Bitcoin heat. I've got a link above if you want to learn more. But to be honest, taking on those kind of projects can be a little intimidating if you are new to Bitcoin mining. After all, keeping your home warm in the winter and having hot water available is really important. If you don't have hot water, you can end up being forced to take a cold shower. And if you don't have heat, depending on where you live, you could have your home freeze, which can do a lot of damage. You either have to get it right or you have to build in a backup to handle when things go wrong. And if you've been watching my build videos, you've seen how this works in a real system. It took me a few tries to get my mining system running well, and I had to rework my hot water and home heating a couple times to get that working too. And this is the big difference and huge advantage of heating your pool with mining heat. Pools are a luxury item. Not all houses have them, and very few people truly need one. On top of that, pool heating systems are an accessory. They're not essential to pool operation, and many pools don't have heating systems. This means that adding Bitcoin heating to a pool is a fantastic home Bitcoin immersion mining starter project. You can get exposure to the ins and outs of running ASICs, working with immersion fluids, pumps, heat exchangers, and piping. And if it doesn't work out, you're only out a pool heater. You're not risking a key part of your home infrastructure. Now, having said that, pool pump and filtering systems aren't free. So there is a risk of messing that up and that can impact your pocketbook. And this brings up an important disclaimer. I am not a pool guy. I don't own a pool and I've not personally built in a pool heating system yet. Also from a safety perspective, heating a pool with Bitcoin miners mixes water with high powered electrical devices, which historically is kind of dangerous. So treat everything here as just a starting point or a source of ideas. Before doing any work on your pool system or hooking up miners, get help from a qualified pool systems expert and a qualified electrician. With that out of the way, the next thing to cover is what to expect with Bitcoin mining pool heating. And the first thing to understand is that water has an extremely high thermal heat capacity. What that means is it takes more energy to heat or cool water than it does to heat up most everything else. And this can be a good or bad thing depending on the build. On the one hand, a mining setup can run a really long time, dumping all of its heat into the pool before the pool gets too hot and the miners have to be shut down. On the other hand, it might take a really long time before the pool gets up to temperature. And so one of the more useful calculations you can do is to get a rough estimate of how fast your pool could heat up with your mining setup. Now, figuring this out exactly is not easy, but there's a simple calculation that can give you a starting estimate. And this calculation is based on a key design parameter, which is the ratio between the mining power in kilowatts and the pool size in thousands of gallons. For example, if you have a mining setup with two S19 miners, your power input is going to be around 6,000 watts. And if your pool is around 8,000 gallons, the ratio for this setup is going to be 6 over 8 or 0.75 kilowatts per 1,000 gallons. Here's a simple equation using that ratio to calculate the time it will take for a pool to hit a specific temperature increase. I've calculated this equation for a number of different minor power to pool size ratios. Here's a quick chart with the results. Feel free to pause and take a screen grab if you want to use this in your build. If you know the size of your pool and the size of your mining setup, this will give you the best case or shortest possible time to heat your pool. And that's because this simple equation assumes you're not losing any heat from the pool to the surroundings and you're not losing any mining heat to the surroundings either. In reality, pools can lose a ton of heat to the air and into the ground and depending on your mining setup, you can see losses there as well. So the actual performance of a real system is going to be a lot worse. It will take much longer to get to a given temperature with a real mining setup and a real pool. 
This equation and chart was just to give you a rough idea and first estimate of how your system might perform. Now, once you have chosen the size of the mining system that works with the size of your pool, the next question is how to make these two systems work together. And the key component here is the heat exchanger used to transfer heat from the minor cooling fluid to the pool water. Now, in past episodes, I've talked extensively about braze plate heat exchangers, and I've used them in my home mining system. They are fantastic for those use cases, but with pool heating, they are not such a great idea. Most braze plate heat exchangers use copper as the brazing material, which generally is not a great mix with pool water. The heat exchanger might work for a while, but eventually corrosion will take over and fluid will start leaking between the miner system and the pool. Also, braze plate heat exchangers often are not made for high fluid flow rates. If a braze plate heat exchanger is inserted into the pool filtering piping, it might slow down the flow rate to a point where it could really mess up the pool filter operation. Instead, the type of heat exchanger to use is a stainless steel or, better yet, titanium shell and tube heat exchanger that is designed to work with pool water chemistry. The way these heat exchangers work is one fluid flows through a larger tube called the shell and the other fluid flows through smaller tubes within the larger tube. There are a ton of different designs for shell and tube pool heat exchangers, including some that are welded together and others that are assembled from components and sealed with O-rings. And the right type to use is going to be dependent on whether you build a single loop or dual loop immersion mining system. Now I've covered the differences between single and dual loop immersion systems in a past episode, and the differences here are really important. When using a single loop immersion system, the fluid passing through the shell and tube heat exchanger is going to be the dielectric cooling fluid. This fluid really likes to leak and doesn't work with most O-ring materials. If dielectric oil leaks into the pool water, that's not great, but it will likely be diluted, so it really isn't noticed. In contrast, if pool water gets into the immersion tank, it can break down the immersion fluid, resulting in an electrical short, which could cause a fire or an electrical shock. So with a single loop mining system, it is really important to use a welded heat exchanger design to ensure there's no leaks. Now with a dual loop system, there is a lot more flexibility. The cooling fluid here is a glycol water mixture, which generally works fine with most O-ring materials, so most shell and tube heat exchangers should work. However, the downside with a dual loop system is heat transfer efficiency. With a dual loop system, heat has to be transferred from the dielectric fluid to the glycol water fluid, and then from the glycol water fluid to the pool water. Each heat exchange results in a temperature drop, which is going to limit how much heat gets to the pool water. And before getting into heat exchanger sizing, I just want to give a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and to hit the like button below. This will really help grow the channel and get this information to more people like you. Now with either dual loop or single loop systems, when it comes to the size of the heat exchanger, the key is to select as big of a heat exchanger as possible. Now for large heat exchangers, the design documentation will state heat transfer capabilities of several hundred thousand BTU, and that might seem like it is horribly oversized. But these stated heat transfer rates are for conventional heating systems, where the differences in fluid temperatures are very large, often more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. In contrast, in mining systems, the difference between the pool water and mining fluid is going to be much, much smaller. To compensate for this smaller temperature difference, an oversized heat exchanger is needed to transfer heat from the minor fluid to the pool water. With the heat exchanger picked out, the next question is how to fit this into the existing pool system, and there's a couple integration options here. First, a dedicated pool water flow loop can be built to route water through your mining heat exchanger separate from the pool filtering system. The upside here is that this separate loop can be run as often or as long as needed, turning it on and off separate from any filtering cycles. The downside is a whole separate piping network must be built, which is going to be extra work and extra cost. 
The second option is to install the heat exchanger into the existing pool filtering system. The upside here is that the existing piping system can be used, which will likely be cheaper and quicker than building something new. From what I've gathered online, most pool heating systems are installed after the filtering systems before the fluid re-enters the pool. But this is where it would be a good idea to talk to your pool installer to make sure this is the correct install point for your pool. Now the downside with this approach is you can only heat your pool when the filtering system is running. The low temperature of Bitcoin mining heat means you may have to run your filtering system a long time to heat up your pool and that might put a lot more wear and tear on your pool filtering system. And this brings up another design consideration of whether to keep the miners on all the time or just power them up when heating the pool. I've covered this decision in my home heating and water heating episodes, and for this application, it's pretty much the same story. If the miners are only used when the pool needs the heat, a control system will be needed to turn the miners on and off. If instead the miners are run all the time, a secondary cooling system, such as a dry cooler, will be needed to cool the miners when the pool isn't being heated. A bypass piping system can also be used to route hot cooling fluid around the heat exchanger when heat is not needed in the summer months. One last topic to cover is putting it all together. Hot water heating, home heating, and pool heating. Bitcoin immersion mining creates a heat source that can be used for any combination of uses. It's possible to create a Bitcoin powered home heating system where a centralized immersion mining tank powers a hot water system, a home heating system, a pool heater, and uses a dry cooler to expel any unused heat. This is where the only limitation is your creativity. And if you're thinking about or working on your design, feel free to contact me with any questions or just to talk through a design. I'd love to help you build the ultimate heating system for your home. Okay, so that's all I've got for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to cover some hardware and software from my latest sponsor. Like, subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes coming your way. And with that, bye.